Hi there, welcome to Rappler. I'm Beko Pin, and even though technically we're months away from the official campaign period, there's no denying it, it's election season in the Philippines. Today, we're kicking off Rappler's The Leader I Want series, a campaign that aims to focus on issues, not personalities, and on platforms instead of gimmicks. So we're starting by taking it really close to home, or at least um, where Rappler is, literally. So please help me welcome Vico Soto. He's the he's a counselor of the First District of Pasig City. Hi, Bea. Thank you for having me. Hi, thank you. Okay, so let's go straight, cut to the chase. Um, for our viewers who might not be from Pasig City or who might not know who you are yet, uh, you're a first-term counselor in the first district of Pasig, and you're running for mayor. Right, which was mayor. a surprise to a lot of people, I think. Um, bakit mayor? Well, it was a surprise to me too. Okay. <laughs> uh, not in the sense that I, you know, when I, I made the decision, uh, I made the final decision probably just one or two days before. But I really felt that you know, there needs to be someone to contest the the current. Uh, family. Uh, yeah. There have been four of them with the same last name yeah. who have been mayors yeah. and uh, no disrespect to the, their service and you know, the, the good programs that they've had for the city but there are also instances of uh, you know I feel like it's time for a change especially right. in the culture of politics in Pasig. Right. Um, well the incumbent district representative in Congress is as you said, Bio and the, the right? Yes, they're and siblings. The, and the, the mayor congressman is congressman and yeah. the mayor are siblings. Um but but people might be saying because you are how you're twenty I'm twenty nine. You're twenty nine. Yeah. Parang bakit ang aga sa career mo taking on right. um seeking the position of mayor in, in such a huge yeah. city like Pasig, right? Yeah. Like and what, against the political giant. And, uh, against yeah. the political giant. So so what 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 was going through your head? Um, I mean, didn't it, wasn't it like parang maaga pa masyado, baka iba na lang muna, wala, bang ganun na, wala kang ganun na naisip at that time? But to be honest, if there was someone else yeah. uh, who, who decided to run for mayor that you know, has at least a similar, uh, similar political leaning as me in the sense that you know, I, I feel that that person is honest and transparent mm -hmm. and uh, not corrupt, I would support that person. Uh, but okay. You know, they've been unopposed basically for the past elections, how many elections. Right. So I, I felt like as a councillor and as the only independent in the city council yeah. and basically as the only independent <laughs> in local the, official yeah, yeah, in yeah, Pasig, yeah. Uh, I felt like someone needed to step up okay. and it might be a tough journey but I'm willing to step up. Right. Political dynasties are a long-running issue in Philippine politics, right. national, local, kung ano man Siyempre, the people who do belong to political uh -huh. dynasties would argue that it's not us that's the problem, right? They will say that. But like, why do you think political dynasties are an issue, or in fact an issue, in local and national politics? Well, first of all, let me state categorically that I am in favor of an anti-political dynasty law. And okay. my preferred version of the bill is up to the fourth degree of consanguinity. Yeah. Actually, matatamaan ako nun, it's <laughs> until the fourth degree. Okay, because in case you did not know, um, he is a Soto, as in you are right. the nephew right. of the Senate right. of So the that's the third degree of yeah. consanguinity. Then I have cousins also who yeah. are uh, seeking, seeking office. Yeah. So fourth degree yung cousin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, of so course, yung opponent ko is second degree since magkapatid sila. Yeah, yeah. And then um, first degree since their parents were the previously yeah. the, the mayor. Yeah. So so, um, so why are you against political dynasty? I'm against political dynasty because we've seen, I've seen the studies, we've seen the numbers, and we've seen that quantitatively, empirically, yeah. political dynasties are bad for. But the thing is, it's not a, it's not a moral evil. It's not innately evil. Right. Political dynasties, but it's bad for our country because we see that provinces with political dynasties and and LGUs with strong presence of political dynasties are poorer than yeah. those without political dynasties. And you're dynasties. citing these it's studies it's by... Uh, uh, Ronald Mendoza, yes, yes. Dean of... They're actually uh, in Raptor if you Google yeah. those. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right. And, yeah. And, and, I mean, the, uh, the viewers can easily Google these studies. Yeah. It's very clear. But the thing is, from me coming from a political family, or, or, you know, if you have... Or let's not talk about me first. If yeah. you have a political... You know, a person coming from a political family who knows that he or she is qualified, honest, you know, uh, experience enough. If that person would voluntarily just say, "Okay, di na ako tatakbo," mm -mm. say, "Part ako ng political family," then those who are corrupt will naturally win. So it, it, it's 
we need a law. That, that's, the, that's the bottom line. We need right. a political dynasty, anti-political dynasty law. Right. And of course, uh, political party reform and electoral reform. Right. And see, without that, we're very, number one, we're very personality-based. And number two, in the absence of strong political parties, people will naturally go to their families because they know their families will be loyal to me, to them, yeah. or uh, to me. Yeah. I know my, my parents won't betray it's me, human no nature, matter right? what will yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're not going to betray me. And since we don't have strong political parties with good ideo or strong ideologies, very personality driven, talagang it's natural. Eh. So we, yeah. need, uh, we need to fix our laws first. The before, structure should. Yeah, before we, we ask political families to step out of the picture, we need to work on our laws. Right. Uh, okay, so you, when you ran in 2016, mm -hmm. which feels like a lifetime ago, but it was just <laughs> two, three years ago. You were top councillor. I mean, right. you topped the, the race for the first district of Pasig. But of course, running for mayor is totally different. Of course. Uh, Aside from, obviously, it's a bigger population. But but yun nga, you mentioned na kanina, you're going up one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. against a Eusebio, a very entrenched family here in Pasig City. So, like, do you th are you ready for that? The main challenge is that, you know, people, a lot of our countrymen, mga kababayan natin, there's this misconception that when politicians who are in power give help mm -hmm. that it comes from them personally no, that's very true it's, that's very it's, true. it's the culture of patronage that is so difficult to break mm -hmm. it's so hard to tell people now don't worry if there's a new mayor these benefits will be continued i saw your tweet you were addressing city, concerns yeah. these are city programs yeah. scholarships benefits to senior citizens some people are really scared that you know ito na nga lang nakukuha namin mukha wala pa so we need to be able to, you know, there's this level that we need to be able to communicate the message properly. That mm -hmm. if we have a government that is uh, that is honest and that is really looking for uh, looking out for the people and looking at long-term solutions, yeah. not just short-term dole outs, that their lives will become better. Yeah. Pero ang hirap na na, aside from introducing yourself, right. obviously, to the That's other really barangays hirap. that you oh, haven't no. campaigned uh -huh. in, you're also like it sounds like you want to educate people that this is what government actually right. does. It's not like it's not a personalistic thing. Sigur, it's a uh, It's a it's a combination of idealism, idealism mm. and pragmatism okay. in real politics. Kung yeah. uh, if we just you know we we can't just you know go around on our high horse saying hey, this is how government should mm. work. There are certain realities. Mm -mm. Eh. So means ang pagmila malapit sa office, sumihi ng tulong, matulong din talaga yeah, ako. It's not the most ideal situation. The, the ideal situation is that your politicians would not spend a single peso of their yeah. money because the system because you use the money of mm. the of the city in the official way in the legal way mm -hmm. uh, but you know pasig has a budget of 10 billion pesos wow. b as in boy 10 billion pesos yeah. per year yeah. so you know if you have 10 billion pesos and you use every peso of that properly for 800,000 constituents i think mm -hmm. all the major needs will be addressed Right. And, you know, it, it's easy for you know, someone who's in poverty to get blinded by short-term dole outs. Uh, and really, that's where the challenge lies. Yeah. Um, we have a question from social media, yeah. and we kind of discussed this okay. earlier. Okay. And ano daw ang nagawa mo bilang councilor? Right. One of your pet legislations, uh -huh. or the, the legislation that you really pushed for in Pasig City, is actually about FOI. Yes, right? it, or transparency ordinance. Okay. In essence, a freedom of information, uh, local law. Yeah. Why? Why that? Of yeah, all, like, right. there are so many other things you can also prioritize. Why do you think transparency, freedom of information, is something that's important in a city? Uh, you know, first of all, we start with ano ba yung trabaho ng isang konsyal? What, yeah. what you know, ano yung tungkulin officially? Because uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. there are a lot of expectations that you have projects, yeah. that you, have, you you do this or that. Yeah. But what is the the, the role of a councillor? Is really legislation. legislation. We have delegated power from Congress. Yeah. So. You know, from that, uh, it, it comes with it the power of the purse. Yeah. So all the, the budget, when the mayor proposes his budget for the year, it goes through the council. And, you know, sad to say, not, not mo I think most people, uh, most Pasigenos don't know that. Yeah. So I, I felt that what is, you know, since I'm an independent, I don't get any budget. I can't do many projects mm -hmm. uh, unless I use my own personal funds or if I have sponsors, mm -mm. Uh, which I try to do, but yeah. siyempre kulang pa rin. How do you go against 10 billion pesos? Right, right, right. So um, one of my the, the, the things that I really tried to push was to make Pasig more transparent. Okay. So we see where do we actually spend the 10 billion pesos. Mm. And how so you're just tracing yeah, so where the money goes. Yeah, so and 
you know, money is probably the most important issue, but it really extends beyond money. So, you know, if you want to figure out, or you, you know, you, there's a problem with the trash in, in the trash collection mm. in your in your area, you can use an, an FY request mm. to find out so what's happening. Pera, bakit uh, it, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. daming pwede paggamitan ng FOI, hindi yeah. lang budget. Although budget is the most important thing. Yeah. Actually, before uh, before I filed the FOI ordinance, we had a quote-unquote transparency test. Mm -hmm. Or uh, you might call it an FOI practice. Mm -hmm. We had students from Ateneo de Manila, uh, political science students, go to Pasig, uh, not affiliated with me, but okay. through their professor. They had uh, they requested for certain documents. Oh, so that they, was the did basis. Kasi ang sabi sa akin, okay. uh, sabi ng ibang city officials namin, Vico, di na kailangan yan. Very transparent na yung city. Kasi I was gonna ask you, did you encounter resistance? Full when disclosure policy yeah. naman daw. Mm -mm, I, I'm mm -mm. sure you're familiar yes, with that. Yes, yes, yes. There are certain documents that require yeah. publication and yeah. posting. If people don't know, like in the city, in the in the government offices, there's actually a bulletin it's board where you're supposed there. to put there, Pero right? What, what, What's written down there is very skeletal, it's very basic. So like for example, uh, elevated walkway in Ortigas, it will say there 59 million pesos, it will say the name of the contractor, but that's about it. Yeah. So what, what uh, the students from Ateneo did was to go and ask for the actual bid docs. Mm. To see sino yung nag sino ang nakuha, okay. yung mga nag bakit nakuha, bakit nakuha and, to and then the program of work, how much is the cement, ganun. And you know they were asked. So they went first to uh, back the uh, mm. award committee, mm -mm. and then uh, they were told to go to the engineering department. Engineering department. They were told to go to the mayor's office. Right. Mayor's office. They were told na anong ginagawa niyo? Uh, bakit niyo bakit niyo kailangan niyan? Okay. Diba? So uh, sino sino nagpagawa niyan sa iyo? Mm. Ganun kaagad yung tanong. Yeah, 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 so yeah. and then they were asked to go to the education department. Na wala naman kinalaman sa, sa kasi estudyante <laughs> sila. Kasi estudyante okay. Sila. So you, you know, that example alone shows that we still have a long way to go when it comes to transparency. But this is yeah. a right. Yeah. This is a constitutional right that we can fi find in, in the Bill of Rights, Section 7. Right. So th it's, it's something that you don't need a reason to ask for information from your government right. or to ask for public records yeah. or documents. Yeah. It's your right. You right. can just get it if you want to. So that's what my, the, the ordinance that I yeah. filed addresses. It provides a clear mechanism. Yeah. You know, the FOI, kasi in theory, it's a very popular, it's uh -huh. a popular uh -huh. measure, like yeah. politicians are quick to say yes, transparency, yeah, 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 yeah. but it's the nitty-gritty, kasi where, uh -huh. the where, where a lot of politicians, not just local, but even national, are like, that's where they, you know, draw the line, up, or, oh, that's too much, or whatever, whatever. Uh -huh. did, did, you, did you encounter that sort of resistance? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, there <laughs> certainly was resistance. Uh, in fairness to my fellow councillors, they were relatively open to the idea. They, they wanted to change a lot of things in the ordinance, but it came to a point that I said, okay, either we pass it or we don't. Uh, it's, it's that simple. There were some details that they asked me to change. And, okay. You know, I had to make some uh, concessions, yeah. but we were able to pass the meat of it. The number one yeah. is the presumption of openness. Mm -mm. And the number two is the mechanism where you, where you request. So you, now it's the information officer. You just go to that information officer, and then you can ask for the documents that you want to see. Okay, as people are interested about this, uh -huh. there's a question. What are the most positive results so far of the ordinance? How did Pasigenos react? How are they being empowered upon yeah. getting correct info uh -huh. ang haba ng tanong, about yeah. budgets and expenditures? Right. So, um, it's been, the, the, the law has been published. Mm -hmm. um, we're waiting now for the full Im implementation mm -hmm. of the mayor. So, okay. Yeah, na kailangan natin bantayan ngayon. Okay. Uh, and we need people who will try to request for documents. We need people who will identify what their what information they're interested in. So that's Following the help that I talaga. need yeah. as a as a counselor. That's the help that I need. I need people to actually test the mechanism <laughs> if it really works. Yeah. Okay. So first time entering politics, uh -huh. three years ago, uh, two years ago. Like yeah. What were there things that surprised you w when you entered? Um, I'll, I'll put it this way. I, before I entered politics, before I decided to run, I was mm -hmm. working at a program under the then Ateneo School of Government, okay. uh, Government Watch and Political Democracy and Reform. So okay. there, uh, I wasn't there for a long time, but, but we did a lot of government monitoring work and uh, civil society work. So you know, it's, it's a government reform-oriented group. Mm -hmm. So you know, we we always 
tackle these problems of government, you know, in entrenchment of political families, and you know, what, what, what can we do to make government mm -hmm. more transparent mm -hmm. and more responsive to our needs? Yeah. But I guess uh, knowing it in your head is different from actually seeing it firsthand. And on the ground, and then dealing the with the interactions. Inside the city right? hall, yeah. just seeing the actual practices that a lot of it is, a, a lot of it, a lot of the practices are very well uh, or very uh, um, accepted. Uh, so a lot, you know, maybe even some city officials. Um, probably some of them don't even really have bad intentions. Yeah. But because it's been the way that Pero it's been done kasi, for so long, uh, uh, it's really uh, hard to change. Right. Uh, but so we need people who, you know, who who aren't just in government for the sake of being in government, yeah. but we need people with also backgrounds in other fields. Yeah. Uh, we need people who actually study and you know take this very seriously. Yeah. yeah. Hindi lang, tapos, yeah. Eh, this is the way. But hindi ka lang manager. Yeah. How was the transition from there? Yung parang from a theoretical. I mean, right. it's not. I wouldn't just say it's theoretical, right. but like you know, this more cerebral. Yeah, a very idealistic group. Yeah, uh, approach uh, to uh, looking at government, to like being there in the trenches, actually, you know, trying to push legislation. Or, or, yeah. Well, the good thing in government watch is though it's it's a group of very idealistic people, but they're also in you know, real. They, they they also guide me and. You know, that's where I get my mentors then. Yeah. Uh, it's important for me, I'm 29 years old, it's important for me to get the perspective also of people with more experience yeah. than me. Because uh, kahit sabihin ko na, experience naman ako. And it's totoo naman, experience mm -hmm. naman ako. Pero syempre, iba pa rin yung 30 years na nandun. Yeah, of course. Years. Not just in government, but doing government reform work and yeah. in, in, uh, in work re re dealing with transparency, participation, accountability. Uh, so it, it, it's it's very important for me, and you know, asking them advice, you know, ano ba yung pwede natin, uh, uh, where, when, what points of government can we push for change? Mm -mm. Hindi lang yung bara bara, basa laban yeah. lang ng laban. Yeah. Kailangan may strategy that involved. Yeah, siguro we'll segue to that question. Or to the question also na okay, you're, you're a millennial. Mm -hmm. I know people hate that buzzword, yeah. but it, I mean it, 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 <laughs> it's true. It's true, right? So, what do you think a millennial can offer a highly urbanized city like Pasay, right? Because I, I read the comments before when you mm -hmm. were when you filed your candidacy, people were saying he's too young. Mm -hmm. Like, how will he know how to handle a city as big as Pasay, right. right? Well, number one, even if I'm young or I'm a millennial. Mm. It's something that I've prepared for. Uh, yeah. I'm actually graduating with my master's in uh, public management this November. Okay. Uh, I'm done with everything. I'm just waiting for the graduation. Okay. So you know, things like that. Of course, school is different from practice. Of course. But I also have uh, experience in practice. But I think more, more importantly, um, there's no one person who knows all the answers. Not even in a barangay, not in a city. The president doesn't know all the answers. Yeah. That's so why you have a team. The you, most right? important thing is to get a strong team, yeah. get strong mentors, yeah. get experts from transport. You know, traffic is a very big problem. We need experts from transport. Mm. We need experts in the economy. Uh, and we need to engage the people and get them to participate. So that's I if you're asking uh, what millennials should do or what they can do, it's uh, to find avenues to participate. Right. Go to your barangay assembly. Right. Um, engage them even on Facebook at the bare minimum. Yeah, right? yeah. So if if more young people engage the government, local government in particular, because sometimes uh, millennials, you know, uh, we tend to focus on national. Yeah. We forget yeah. our city. The we bigger issues. Our yeah, yeah, yeah. These are the issues that are right next door, yeah. right in front Literally, of you. Yeah. So, we need to start now. Actually, may nagtanong. I would like to know your plan. Malamit at nataga pasig na nanonood. Mm -hmm. I would like to know your plan regarding the super traffic and <laughs> ongoing coding being implemented in Pasig. It's getting worse. <coughs> Hindi worse, worse. So ganon na siya kalala. It's down. becoming worse. There's yeah. a joke that's going around, and it's probably half true. And a lot of people are calling Pasig the Republic of Pasig. I know. I've, I've, I've seen, seen those uh, memes that we are like Pasig is like the choke point. Republic of Pasig. Yeah. One, the most immediate thing that we can do is to better coordinate with other LGUs and the yeah. national government agencies. The mm -hmm. uh, problem namin sa Pasig, minsan parang may sariling discarte, which is not 100% bad. Yeah. But we need to coordinate because we're in the middle of Metro Manila. Mm. We're right in East yeah. Metro Manila. It connects so, all so the yeah, other major cities. We have borders with Quezon City, yeah. Rizal, Taguig, Makati. 
uh, in Pateros. So, pasig so, naging salot sa traffic na <laughs> ibang city. Yeah, yeah, But, yeah. you know, just to temper expectations, and, and um, I, I don't want to be a politician who makes empty promises. Yeah. Definitely in three years, you can't solve traffic. Right, <laughs> But right. But we can... And it's a Metro Manila problem. It's, it's, it's not yeah, just so It's really city. the national government. But then again, we need to be able to coordinate better with the other LGUs and the appropriate government agencies. Right. And the yung, like for example, I, I think by coding that person, mm. that the, the person who has meant the ad even scheme mm, in mm -hmm. Pasig, which is really something that is very disjointed. Mm -hmm. It's like you have a, a scheme in the entire of Metro Manila, and, and then, then you have six roads here that all of a sudden have ad even. Yeah. So if you're not from Pasig, you go to Pasig, all of a sudden you see this sign that says, One three five seven nine zero two four six eight. It's a different uh, rule. Yeah. Hindi mo kamera na man eh, kasi you're not from there, so it's yeah. like all of a sudden the uh, ikot, which yeah. adds to the on, traffic. Because yeah. on those six roads, baka guminhawa in traffic. Mm. But if you look at the big picture, mm. yeah, I don't think it's a you good solution. You can't just be selfish about what's we, going on we here. We need to right? come up uh, with a comprehensive and cohesive traffic management plan, and right. this includes th the big things like. You know, fixing roads, mass mm. transport, uh, fixing public transport. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most important. Thing. Yeah. But also the little things like making sure traffic lights are properly yeah. calibrated, better enforcement, uh, better the training of traffic good, yeah. enforcers. Yeah. Make sure hindi lang sila yeah. Maybe regularization of some enforcers to mm. give them a little bit Incentive of a moral boost. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. And a little, a lot of little things. And if we talk about traffic, we can go on and on <laughs> yeah. for for three hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these yeah. are the, li the little things, combination of little things, and having the, a comprehensive right. traffic management plan. Right. I want to zoom out then. Um, during the two two and a half, or a, a little over half, two and three fourths years as councilor, yeah, two, uh, two and a half. around that time, yeah. Um, w w what do you think can be improved in the way the executive is run? Right and the way the executive interacts with the local legislature. So again, if people aren't familiar, or, or baka hindi, I mean, di lang kasi inyo natulo ng maayos, mm -hmm. in, in a local government unit, you have the executive, that's the mayor. We should teach that in schools. That it is supposed <laughs> to be taught in schools. I didn't learn that in school. Really? Oh, iba yung, iba, I, it depends on the teacher, I think, I sometimes. Guess, no. Yeah, so there's the mayor, and then you have the local legislature, right? Yeah. So that's, that's different. <laughs> so in case right. you didn't know, right. so, okay. Um, how do those two branches interact in Pasig City, based on your experience? Well, I'm very hesitant to talk about my fellow councillors and because they've been they've been nice to me. Mm -hmm. We've we've had a good working relationship yeah. for the past two two and a half years. So I magayo ko naman sila siraan, but uh, siguro just a point of improvement if they yeah. can take this constructively also. Yeah. Is we need a more independent. City Council. Okay. That's really. And maybe that's why people sometimes, like, they blur the line between the executive right. and. Because they're partido, so they think that. Okay, lang naman mag partido. Eh. Yeah. There's no problem yeah. if you support the mayor. The, I mean, it, good if, the, if yeah. executive and legislative are working together yeah. harmoniously. That's good. But we need more independent ideas coming from the council. We need to be able to say to the mayor, na, Mayor, I don't think this policy is good. I think mm. we need to change this policy. And from what I've seen, it's really just the mayor who says, in fact, most of the ordinances that are passed in city council, I would dare say 99% of the measures passed, just come from the mayor's office. Mm, okay. So we need a more, and yeah, I'm very proud that I was able to pass two, yeah. you know, which maybe for another city would be uh, Conte. You know, but for us, it was a big deal because usually the councillors don't come up with their own legislative agenda. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one thing we need to give the council and in, in you know uh, if I win that's one thing that I will do Make, allow them to become more independent right um, another question about you know the, the, the past few years as councillor so what do you think are the immediate like urgent things that the incumbent administration in Pasig City has yet to address or mm. hasn't addressed completely right. and and what do you plan to do to address these issues that you know, you think are lacking or could be improved? You know, I, I mentioned earlier that a lot of people are worried that certain programs will not be continued. Mm -hmm. the, the two that people always ask me is in scholars, uh, the, the, the so-called BCE scholars of, mm -hmm. of the city, and number two, the, the senior citizen benefits like the cash gift and Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, so people always ask me if, if those will be continued. Mm -hmm. and 
again, like I said, it's very easy to continue that because we mm. have 10 billion pesos yeah. and this so comes huge. from the city fund. Yeah. So it's not really a matter of changing or overhauling everything, but it's just making sure that every peso gets spent properly okay. and realigning our priorities. I think it's we, we are prioritizing infrastructure too much in terms of multi-purpose halls, okay. um, you know, elevated walkways that maybe cost too much when there are people who need health care. Mm -hmm. People who, um, you know, when you, we have city hospitals in Pasig, um, like, like PCGH, for example, mm -hmm. or Child's Hope, but, you know, even if we, they have this so-called uh, blue card, senior citizens are allowed to apply for blue yeah. card, um, supposed to be free health care. Mm -hmm. But when they go there, they're always, uh, the, 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 the hospital always lacks medicines. Mm. So that's one of the the programs that I really want to reform is right. to in, in, increase, you know, change the priorities of the city. Right. So, yung mga parada, mm -hmm. the binabudgetan ng limang million, eh, eh, hindi mo kailangan ng ganun. <laughs> yeah. Magpa-file lang nga sila for candidacy, magsasarap pa sila ng kalsada, may fireworks pa. So, right. I don't know where the money for that came from. I know right, we should right. do an FOI yeah. uh, request test for that. But yung others, like um, pag-araw ng Pasig, mm. uh, the, the pag-araw ng Pasig, we have so many celebrations mm. that cost so much for the city. Yeah. Millions of and millions of pesos yeah. are spent. So why don't we just have a simple celebration right. in accordance with law? The law says we should have simple celebrations. And then the money that we could have that we, that was previously spent for these big celebrations, let's transfer it to healthcare. Yeah. Kasi mas Social yun services. Tao. Social services. Number one is really healthcare. Yeah. Uh, Eighty percent of the people who go to my office and ask for help are asking help for medical reasons. Okay. A lot of people are asking questions. I think we have a lot of Pasig mm -hmm. viewers this afternoon. Um, it's a very specific question. Okay. Currently, there's uh, my rule sa Pasig City Hall na once natanggal or nag-resign yung employees, hindi na ulit makakabalik sa City Hall for employment. Magbabago po ba ito if once you become mayor, if you become mayor? Thank you. Well, the... Um, Employment in the public sector should be merit-based because yeah. this is the money of the people that we're spending. It's not my private business. Yeah. It's not the private business of the Eusebios. Yeah. It's, it's public money. So if whoever's the best for the job who applies, that person should get the job. Yeah. It's, it's really as simple as that. Not connections, uh, yeah. not whatever. Uh, okay, we've been talking about you know, the, 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 the Eusebio dynasty, if you will, or the, the powerhouse that, is, that are the Eusebios. But, I mean, we touched on it, Kanina, but I have to ask you also point okay. blank because, um, again, you have the, a great name recall. Your, your parents are, 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 are huge celebrities. Right. Um, first of all, did you think it was, like, was it an advantage or, in fact, a disadvantage being a Soto and running for public office for the first time? In terms of winning, it's definitely an advantage yeah. because um, it, it's, it's the stickiness, so to speak. Of course. I, if, if I say something that you know, resonates with people, maybe they'll tell 10 people if it's me, but if it's another candidate, they might only tell one or okay. two people. I say, you know, we're very celebrity oriented. Of course, yeah. So it has its good and bad points. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, uh, the bad point is, of course, it's harder to make a name for myself. But, yeah. you know, I, I really don't mind because I'm not in it for... Uh, when, I, when I first decided to run in 2016, and the same now for 2019, the first question that I ask myself is, do I have good intentions? And okay. Do I have the right motives? Right. And if my motive is really like ego-driven yeah. or just para sumikat or yeah. magkaroon ng yeah. accomplishments sa pangalan ko, yeah. then maybe I'd be a little bit insecure about it. Yeah. But, if, if, you know, because we're mission-driven, yeah. we have uh, goals that we want for the city and yeah. for politics in general, then it doesn't bother me that much. Yeah. Of course, the Soto name isn't just known in, in, in show business. Uh -huh. It's also a big name. Oh, it's, it, yeah, it's a big name in, in, in politics, national. Mm -hmm and local. Um, national politics, of course, your uncle is the Senate president, mm -hmm. your cousin is running for vice mayor of Quezon City, another huge city in Metro Manila. So, parang w when you say kasi that you're against political dynasties, yeah. and then you have yeah. this na parang, eh, pero ikaw soto right, ka naman right, eh. Right. So, how do you reconcile that when people point that out to you? Right. Well, like, I, like we mentioned earlier, yeah. we really need a law. Yeah. Because if we just expect people to implement it on their own. Yeah. For example, if you, know, uh, uh, if you have a speed limit, yeah. If there's an actual speed limit in the road, everyone yeah. should follow it. Yeah. But if there's like, you know, just a in suggested practice, yeah, speed yeah, yeah, limit, yeah, yeah. 
and then people will, you know, good drivers might follow. Right. Uh, but you know, you need the law. We need yeah. the law. Just put it that way. We need, and I, whatever I can do to support the anti-political dynasty law, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We think we really need it, especially since we see the numbers. Yeah. yeah. I'm just curious because your uncle is obviously a ally of, of mm. the administration. I mean, he, he, he's also been, like, he's also be, had stances, you know, to yeah. defend the independence, obviously, of, of the Senate. But at the end of the day, he, he is allied with the administration. Do you, like, and, but you have pronouncements that might be critical mm. of policies of this admin. Do you ever talk about that in the family? Na parang, we've, oh, bakit ganito yung... We've actually never talked about it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm not anti-administration or pro-administration. I, I, I like to stick to the issues. Yeah. So if there's a certain policy that I agree with, then I'll say so. Yeah. But if there's a, a policy that I don't like, yeah. I'm also, I'm also going to say it. Is that not difficult though? Because you know, the Philipp Philippine politics, whether we like it or not, and we try to not make it personality based, mm -hmm. but it's very. Well, it really is personality right? based. Yeah. And unless we have political party reform and electoral reform, it's always going to be that way. Right. Uh, so again, we need to fix our laws. But um, uh, with regard to my uncle, sometimes we disagree. Okay. We've never talked about it. But I think there's nothing wrong with disagreeing with your family. Of course. Uh, oh, but some people might not agree. I mean, like some people might think that family motto is okay on it, the same it's page. It's not anything personal. I'm, right. I'm not saying anything personal about anyone. Right. It's really just, uh, you know, um, even my parents. Um, I, there are certain things that I disagree with my mom, for example, yeah. when it comes to politics. Yeah. But when it comes to family, it's separate. And, yeah. you know, we never fight in yeah. about it in yeah. when yeah. it comes to personal lives. Na. Yeah. So you were a Paul Sai major in college. Uh -huh. And full disclosure, we were actually in the same batch from college. Right. I would read your articles yeah. in the <laughs> school newspaper. Back in college, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, but you weren't active in student politics then. I wasn't. I wasn't. Right? You, you weren't part of the, you call it the Sangguni oh, My voice is, uh, uh, sorry. My voice is disappearing. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, you weren't part of the student council in college. What made you, so what would, what led you to I running? I would volunteer for, from time to time. Okay. But, but you didn't seek elective posts, right? In never, college. never, never. So what led you I'm to? Really to okay. uh, I'm very uncomfortable. I was growing up, and until now, I'm, I'm a very shy person. Eh. Yeah. Ayoko yung nasa spotlight. Yeah. But for me, if there's some, you know, we ha I have my political leaning and my ideology and, and my heart to serve. Yeah. And I feel like if there's an opportunity, and, you know, not everyone can have this opportunity because of how our system is built. So if there are good people, and I believe, of course, I'm, that I'm, I'm a good person, I'm an honest person, I'm a person who will stand up against corruption. If there are people like this, I believe that, you know, we should, we should step up step up to the plate and, and take the opportunities as we can. Because right. if we don't take the opportunities, someone else will. Yeah. And that person might not be as honest or, not, or might be right. more corrupt. Right. Um, maybe to wrap up also, like, so this campaign is all about the leader that we want, you know, uh, setting, like focusing on issues, hopefully over, you know, gimmicks or whatever, right. or uh, on, on policies over personality. So why should the youth get involved as someone who Ha got involved in politics in the most truest sense, as in like you, you, you ran and you won a post. Mm -hmm. Why do you think the millennial generation or even the Gen Z generation, right. Right, that they're, they're eligible to vote in the coming election? So why should they care about the midterms? And especially local politics, because again, you, yeah. kanina, a lot of like a lot of the social media generation tend to focus on the bigger issues, right? Presidential they, race. Yeah, and they forget that you know, who you, vo who you vote for locally affects how your garbage is collected. Uh -huh. Yeah, so why should they get involved? You know, our, I, I really believe and I feel even when I talk to students, when I talk to young people, uh, from all social classes, from all backgrounds, our generation is dreaming for a political landscape where, you know, the service is really for the people and it's not politically captured by yeah. any family or that you don't need Shouldn't a, be. you don't need a name you don't need a popular name to win uh, you don't need to to engage in patronage politics or corrupt practices to win we all dream of a system like that where everyone has a fair shot everyone has an equal opportunity both politically and economically and and the first step if we want to get there if we want our generation to get there it's going to be a long battle yeah. because 
the institutions, the political and economic institutions are stacked up against us. Yeah. But if we take every opportunity that we can, and that's why I'm running, if we take every opportunity that we can, the first opportunity might be as simple as voting, yeah. might be as simple as engaging in social media, mm. might be joining a civic organization or, an, uh, or a club in school, yeah. it might be joining a different uh, whatever organization in, in college or in joining a people's organization in your community. Right. But if we take steps, it's like a giant wheel that, you know, if you're alone pushing that giant wheel, you might not be able to make a move. Yeah. But if we get more and more people, we'll help you push that wheel. And that right. wheel symbolizes change for our society and more inclusive politics and economics. If we have more people pushing that wheel, eventually it's going to move an inch. Right. And then it's going to move a foot. And then if we all work together and we all get engaged and right. we all take the opportunities that we can, eventually that wheel is going to start moving. And it's going to start moving so fast that if, even if you try to stop that wheel, it's not going to stop. So that's, that, that's why people like me, like you, yeah. people our age and younger should get involved and get right. this wheel moving. And that's the work that's not glamorous at all, not glitzy at all. Like some you might not might see the effect. Yeah. You might not see the output of it what, take what years. you do. It yeah. might take five, ten years. Yeah. It might take our whole lifetimes. Yeah. Maybe the one who will benefit will be the next generation. Or Hopefully even, yeah. we see some of the fruits. Right, right, right. It will be definitely a long battle. Yeah. You know, we look at the history of other countries that have progressed. All, all countries, all developed countries have had dark histories also. Yeah. So you know, we might be here in a, in a part of our history that's very frustrating. But again, we have the technology, we have the means, we have the means to network that previous generations didn't have. So we can do it faster than any generation has ever done so before. Right. But we just need to be able to go and take action, right. get, you know, get out there, get right. involved, right. get every opportunity that we can. Right. So we have a lot of passing people interacting with us. So you can tweet him. He's actually active on social right. media. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us thank this you afternoon. Bea. Yeah. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining thank us. Thank you for everyone who watched. <laughs> um, this has been Bea Kupin. Watch out for more of Rappler's Le The Leader I Want campaign. Different reporters and even editors will be talking to different personalities from the crazy, dynamic, but very, very important world that is the 2019 midterm elections. Thank you for joining us, everyone.